How we handle waste plays an important role to the climate. In this film, we take a look at Nordic innovative solutions to waste management. Landfills are a big source of methane emission. Methane gas is one of the most potent greenhouse gases. In the first two decades after its release, methane is over 80 times more powerful than carbon dioxide. It's estimated that the emissions from landfills in Iceland are about 6 to 10 percent of the whole methane emissions in the country. In Iceland, new methods are being used to spot the emission. The drones are used to make 3D models of the land, to have an ortho mosaic, it's called. By using a methane sensor on a drone, you could possibly map the areas of high emissivity and focus all the efforts on reducing emissions from that area. But what happens with the methane produced in the landfills? Methane in the landfill is collected by a gas collection system, which then cleans the methane and delivers it to some gas stations in Reykjavik for use on cars. This is a resource. We make trash, there's no escaping it. So why not try to recycle this methane that is escaping from the trash by using it on cars? Iceland has used biological methane as fuel for transport for more than a decade. In one year, one landfill produced the equivalent of 2.2 million litres of petrol. Resource International also monitors the escape of microplastics by taking huge samples of sewage water. We're measuring how much microplastics go into the environment. And with the new project, we measure how much microplastics we have in drinking water, so how much we consume as a human. We have developed a method where we do stain and digest the particles on the filter. That means organic particles are digested so that they don't show up falsely and microplastic particles get stained in an orange-red color. Even though Iceland has some of the world's cleanest drinking water, it's possible to find small traces of microplastic. By using this low-cost monitoring method, it's possible to backtrack and find the source of contamination. More and more waste is sorted for recycling, putting pressure on the logistics. In Finland, a company is building an underground vacuum system to transport waste and recyclables. It's like a metro for the trash. When residents put their trash in the right inlet, it's stored in a 300-liter buffer tank. Whenever uh, this uh, buffer tank fills up, then the system will start automatically, convey through the underground piping all the way to the waste collection terminal, where it ends up to the waste container, which then compacts the waste, so that we can have easily up to 10 tons mixed waste in one container. These systems are designed to be unmanned, and we have a central control room where we can monitor all the systems all around the world, so we know 24-7 what's happening if you think about the sewage system, it's a basic thing now, but like 100 years ago, it was not a basic thing. The energy consumption is less than half compared to truck and bin, and the payback period can be as short as three to four years, depending on the number of residents. With Nordic sustainable solutions, both greenhouse gas and trash are considered a resource that's worth taking good care of.